As Bob Dylan would say, the times, they are a-changing. You can't open a newspaper or watch television without seeing the words bruised economy, recession, higher prices, layoffs, closings. And our magazines are full of articles about how to stretch your food dollars, especially now. How to count your pennies, especially now. And how to make do with what you have, especially now. The world is turning solemn, and how we as individuals deal with these changes depends on how we feel about ourselves and our capabilities and our ability to cope. Metaphysics is hard to define. Using the web, I found about 20 different definitions. But what it comes down to is this. Metaphysics is the study of the nature of the world, reality, and existence. That is why I invited Ahura Z. Deliza, owner and headmaster of Unicorn Cove School of Metaphysics, to be on the corner. And I'm so pleased that he accepted. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Did I get your name correct? You did. Good enough. Whoa, good for me. Good for me. Close enough. Good enough. Now, how long has Unicorn Cove existed? Uh, Unicorn Cove has existed for about a little over eight years. Yeah. Now, what is the significance of the name Unicorn Cove? Well, uh, long ago, I decided that I wanted to be a voice for divinity, and uh, that particular image would be the unicorn. Um, the unicorn is the one that stands up in spite of everything that is going on and helps people simply for the joy of helping them. I mean, it's the work that I do that makes me the unicorn. And uh, in other words, uh, I'm like the last stop. When you've run out of ideas, you come find me. Is metaphysics a religion? No. Um, I know that there are a lot of people that would like to put metaphysics in the corner of religion, but it's not. It does exercise three different principles, which are faith, hope, and love. But it also exercises action. In other words, uh, you can have all the faith of the world, but if you do nothing, it means nothing. You can also have all of the love in the world, but if you don't show it, it means nothing. You know? So what metaphysics does is it encompasses everything, um, not just nature, although nature is an integral part of metaphysics. Technically, what metaphysics means is uh, you have to segment them and go meta, which is greater than or beyond, mm -hmm. and then there's physical, which has to do with the world and the way that we understand it and believe it and think with it. But uh, metaphysics can go on forever. It can go far beyond quantum physics, physics. It can go far into the spiritual, the mystical, the uh, metaphysical. Now, I read in a Psychology Today magazine that Maine is notorious mm -hmm. for being wary and nervous about new ideas, especially dealing with the supernatural. Do, well, you, this is, do you find that so? Yeah, this is true. Um, although, I have to admit that Maine has loosened its grip on uh, conventionality lately. I mean, uh, when I first got here, uh, I worked at a Denny's, <laughs> and uh, people would come in, they felt bad, so I'd give them a little spot reading and um, help them to find their way through their uh, negativity or their depression or whatever it is that they're going through. And then later on, when I opened my store, it took a lot of openness to, and a lot of patience to deal with people. Of course, you had people flocking to you, such as uh, uh, people that were going through a hard time, people that needed to know if they were going to get their rent paid people that uh, had a habit that they needed to get rid of. So they'd come find me, but then there were the other people that were skeptics and people that decided that uh, what I was doing was some type of a cult or religion or something like that. So I'd ask them to explain to me what a cult is <laughs> and explain to me what, how what I'm doing is wrong. I'm not taking advantage of anyone. I, all of my classes are taught by donation. Um, I make it so that people can actually learn. I also make it so that people can just know that they have a place to be. You know, so little by little, I think I'm winning them over. And uh, other people have come in, and uh, there are other people that have come into the community that are also helping out. Um, fortunately, uh, some of them are grounded, like myself. I'm extremely grounded. Um, there are those that are not so grounded. Uh, those are the ones that we have to deal with that set us back a little bit. But um, on the whole, um, Metaphysics is winning. Even science has to accept certain things, conventional science, that is. Uh, metaphysics deals with the divine science, but uh, conventional science has to acknowledge the fact that there's something out there that put everything here, and that's why metaphysics is here. When did you first learn that you had a special gift? Um, well, uh, I first learned that I had something different, <laughs> okay, and that was when I was a kid. But I thought everyone thought the way that I did. and. Uh, I found out quite very quickly that they, they did not. They did not see auras. They didn't hear other people's thoughts. They didn't feel other images. They didn't um, think about things the way that I did. So I kind of learned to just kind of be quiet. But then I made a decision. 
my role models have always been very, very spiritual people and people that were very, very evolved, such as Jesus, who was my main role model and still is to this day. I figured, well, you know, you have to think about what he had to deal with. Not everyone was like him either, mm -hmm. but he kept going. Uh, then you look at Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Joan of Arc, you start going through all of these people and you go, wait a second, I'm standing on these people's shoulders. You know, I don't have the right to do anything other than to be the best at what it is that I am. And um, I decided that uh, I would pursue. Did the kids set you apart at school? Sometimes. There were a lot of them that did. Um, I got the typical names. I remember one time being backed into a corner by 350 kids telling me how weird and how ugly and how strange I was. And um, it was very cool, actually. The uh, prettiest girl in the school. And uh, I remember this girl. Her name was Winifred Williams. She came up and she said, leave him alone. That's wonderful. And the she, prettiest girl in school. Mm, prettiest girl in school. She <laughs> says, don't you all know when to leave well enough alone? Leave him be. That's wonderful. Yeah, from that point on, um, people just gave me a wide berth. So how could she understand your gift? You know, I don't know that she understood. I think she just acted out of her own gift, which was compassion. Do people with such special gifts come from families with such special gifts? Not could it be inherited? Not necessarily. No? Um, sometimes it is, I guess. Um, in my family, I'm the only one that thinks this way, and I'm the oldest of eight. Was it hard for you to decide to hone up your skills? Not at all. No? No. Um, you look at people, like I said, my role models were strong. I had Jesus, I had Krishna, I had Buddha, um, both Buddhas, <laughs> you know. And uh, I had all of these people that were standing up for themselves. And uh, it wasn't hard. I wanted to be like them. I figured if I was like them, no one could hurt me. Even though you knew you could be persecuted? Of course. Do you find metaphysics more popular as people find the world so hectic? Um, definitely that. <laughs> um, metaphysics has become kind of a, uh, a light. In other words, uh, no one really understands what metaphysics is, but the term causes people to go, well, let me at least investigate you know, what metaphysics is. And the more the things get bad, you know, you look at Congress, you look at the Senate, you look at what's going on in this election. Even my students, my students have probably been more involved in politics than they ever have in their lives. You know, because of, uh, we've got two historical events going on. One, there's an African-American man running for president. There is a woman running for vice president. No matter what you say about either of them, this is history. Okay, and you have to look at it that way. Which basically means in order for this to happen, something metaphysically had to happen. There had to be a crack in that old wall. You know, so uh, people are definitely looking at the metaphysical and a lot of them are actually asking, um, well, what's next? You got all these people worried about 2012 and I can tell you pretty much for a fact, uh, we'll be here after 2012. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad you told me that. If you think you might have special skills, how do you find out for sure? That's a good question, actually. Ask yourself three things. Who are you, where are you, and what are you doing? And then what do you want to do? Look at yourself and, and see if you can see an energy field around people. Listen to what you hear. Listen to, see what you feel. You have to go through every single thing. You don't really compare yourself to other people because a person with a special gift doesn't necessarily believe that it's special. They usually believe that everyone has the exact same gift. So what you have to do is discern whether or not what you do and how you think is different from the norm. The norm has become quite broad nowadays, so it's gonna be a little difficult. You know, you get a lot of people out there that are calling children indigo children or Christian children, and I, I kinda have to keep people grounded. Look, usually the person that made up a term such as indigo is a person that really doesn't have anything extraordinary because they've never ventured into the extraordinary, but they want to believe that their child is better than someone else's. Yeah. So they make up a term, <laughs> okay? Which is fine, that's fine, you know? But when you get a whole culture that follows this particular thing and says, well, you know, I might be an indigo child, and you don't really understand what an indigo child is, which is basically a person that has extraordinary gifts whose vibrational frequency field happens to be indigo. Excuse me, here I go ranting. It's all right, <laughs> go right ahead. Um, well, 
when you get everybody jumping on a particular bandwagon and no one understands, what happens is you get all of these people that uh, decide that they're going to make up a whole bunch of different things about one concept, and you never really get the concept. Okay? When it comes to being uh, a person who, who teaches, in, teaches the art of metaphysics or, or the concept of metaphysics, look, I've studied for over, I'm 48 years now, 48 years old now, and I've been this way for 48 years. My formal training started when I was 20 years old, and I did that for six years straight. And then my formal training after that, I really didn't start teaching until I was 33 years old. Okay, so when someone comes and tells me that they're a master of something, uh, and I hear a lot of people coming tell me that they're a Reiki master, and they, you know, that's why they practice Reiki, that's great. But you cannot master anything in two or three years. Okay, you can't even master being human in two or three years. Okay, so um, you have to watch a lot of these concepts because they really have nothing to do with the metaphysical. They have to do with the personality flaw. And that personality flaw is an insecurity. Mm -hmm. which means they have to find something to make them believe that they're as good, or good as or better than someone else. So I try to keep my students away from that kind of thing. I ask them what is it that they want. Uh, what is it that you want to be really good at? Unfortunately, being a telepath, I have uh, the ability to teach many things, but I show them what it is that I teach and um, give them the experience and then say, okay, you want to do this? Let's keep a promise to yourself. Remember, you made this promise. Okay, so let's do something daily that is grounded that will say, look, I'm keeping this promise to myself. Recently, we've jumped into film, okay, which is something I've always wanted to do, but I, I thought I'd suck at it, you know. So <laughs> do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, you know, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but you're working on it. I'm working on it, you know, and uh, I'm getting much better. I mean, you saw our little preview, and yes. uh, this is our first attempt at doing a real film, you know, so I don't think I suck that bad, but <laughs> I give my students the opportunity to participate. It's one thing to sit up and talk about things. Uh, if you talk about things, you never get anywhere. If you theorize about something, you never get anywhere. If you look to disprove or to prove anything, you will go nowhere, okay? If someone tells me that they want to do music, I say pick an instrument. Mm. Then we find a way to get the instrument. Okay, because you can hear something in your head, but if you don't train your body to do what's necessary, nothing will ever get done. So you could say that metaphysics is the concept of taking what it is that you see and translating it into an energetic form so that your body can do it as well. In other words, you don't just think you can do it, you do it. And that's with anything. So you're saying there's no gray area in anything. There's a black and a white, and there's no gray area. There's no gray. There's no gray. People who want a gray area are people who want to make an excuse for something. You know, and that's across the board. Listen, I grew up very, very abused, extremely abused. I mean, I know what it's like to uh, see blood pouring from a wound that was inflicted by those who were supposed to be caring for you. I made a decision. I wasn't going to be that way. There's no gray area. It took me time to master some things. <clears throat> but eventually I did. And one of those was to take all of the anger and all of the frustration and all of the, the resentment that I had and the fear that I had and transform it. I transformed it into mental speed. I transformed it into creativity, into focus, into being able to deliver a punch in a martial arts competition or to be able to play an instrument or to draw a picture or to paint or to write a film or a song or uh, be able to dance or do something to figure out a problem, be able to focus in to even keep a job, mm -hmm. which is one thing that people find extremely hard to do because they have no focus. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have concentration. People have concentration. We all do. You hear people say, your, your powers of concentration are low. No, they're not. It's your powers of focus that are low that's low. You know, anyone can concentrate once you find something to focus on and stay with that focus. Instead, what we do is we label someone as having attention deficit disorder, and that's not the case. This person may be able to focus their attention in several different areas if you would give them the opportunity to. What's wrong is we're, we're, we're not equipped to deal with those things. Even science is not equipped to deal with those things. I might have been termed as having 
attention deficit disorder because I could do so many things. Mm -hmm. But I learned to take my attention and focus them into each one of these things so that I can master each one of these things. In other words, a person like myself, one of the biggest insults you can offer me is to call me a jack of all trades. I'm not that. I master every single thing I set out to do, even speaking. Um, growing up, uh, I had a stigma. Being multicultural, um, the culture that stood out the most was African American. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because of that, the stigma was that African American people can't learn, they're, they're slow, they're stupid, they're this, they're that. And you know what? I made a decision. I was never going to be called that. Ever. So, I mastered reading. By the time I was in third grade, I was reading at eighth grade level. By the time I hit fifth grade, I was reading and fully comprehending collegiate material. Okay? I loved English. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, then. All I knew was I wanted to be intelligent. Above anything else, I wanted to be intelligent. Of course, <clears throat> I wanted to be strong, I wanted to be talented, mm -hmm. and loved like everybody does. Mm -hmm. Okay? But I wanted to be intelligent. So by the time I actually met my teacher and we were having a discussion, she asked about school courses. I said, well, I hated English. She said, no, you didn't. <laughs> and I went, I looked at her and I went, what do you mean? I know what I hated. <laughs> I hated English. <laughs> and she said, no, you didn't. So uh, knowing my teacher was superior to me, I, I tried not to argue. <laughs> you know, It just flew out sometimes. But um, she says, OK, you sing, right? And I said, well, yes. She said, well, what's your favorite language to sing? And I stopped and I said, English. She said, uh, you speak very well. I said, well, yeah, you know, I read the dictionary three times. And she says, well, why'd you do that? I said, because I have a love of words. I, I want to say what I mean and mean what I say. She says, well, what language do you speak? It's English. And I looked at her and I went, you know, nice trick. Well, yes, it was. <laughs> so. Uh, I make sure that uh, my students speak correctly. Mm -hmm. um, I know that on certain occasions, uh, uh, society will say that certain people speak in a certain way. Mm -hmm. If I'm kidding around, I guess I could do that too. But I believe that my teacher expects, uh, expects for me to speak perfect English, or as close as I can come. Um, at least uh, have my pronunciation be correct. You know, uh, perfect English would be what they speak over in England. You know, here I'm American. <laughs> you know. Does going forward require forgiveness? Definitely. Definitely that. But the person that you have to forgive more than anything is you. Um, you can forgive the people that did things to you, but you also have to forgive yourself. Um, if you're a child, you, you can't really forgive yourself at the moment. You can forgive those people. But later on, you have to forgive yourself for harboring so much anger. Okay, and but what I mean by forgiveness is not some uh, very sad, depressed, oh, I forgive you. I mean to give yourself enough attention and give yourself enough love that you can say, look, this is going to do nothing but hinder me. I've got to let it go. And drop it. Just drop it. Sounds so easy. Huh, sounds simple. It's not easy. <laughs> There's nothing easy about it. You may have to throw a thousand punches, and on that thousand and one punch, that, th that punch is a thousand and one, you will say, okay, I'm through it. Mm -hmm. But you have to give yourself positive things. For instance, you have to actually exercise yourself. You have to get those, those things out of yourself. These concepts of anger, hatred, violence, fear, all of them, they can be exercised right out of you. And no, it's not going to happen like that. I don't care what anyone tells you. It's going to take you years. It may take you lifetimes. But eventually, you'll reach your goal. No matter what anyone tells you, eventually you will. For instance, you can call it positive thought if you'd like. <clears throat> Metaphysics encompasses positive thought. But it's positive thought accompanied by action. Okay? You can think positively all you want to. And then you walk down a dark alley and see a person like myself and be afraid. When I'm the person, because I showed up, I may be about to save your behind. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got to think, but you have to do. Think, do, think, do, think, do. It's reaction and response. We're highly reactionary as a species. 
We just are. We, we react to everything. Everything causes a reaction. You know, you look at politics right now. Everybody's reacting. Yes. You know, if you look at uh, Mr. McCain, no disrespect, but he's very reactionary. You look at Mr. Obama, he's very reactionary. He hides it well. <laughs> but, you know, you look at the both of them, and that's causing the rest of us to react. Okay? Words that are saying will cause a reaction. But then you have to respond. You have to say, I understand. This person is trying to win a race. Okay? They might say anything. They might look at you know, a kid and decide to say, you know, if you elect me, I'll give you all of the candy in the world. You know, so you, you have to temper your reactions with a responsible action, okay, which is what a response is. Mm -hmm. Teach them to do exactly that. Don't just tell me how, how famous you want to be. What can you do about it? Don't tell me how good you want to be. Can you pick up a broom and sweep? Mm -hmm. You know? Tell me about how, you know, I'm going to break this habit, but you go and buy another pack of cigarettes. You know, don't tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing about it? You may not... Okay, I told you I have a habit of ranting, so... It's all right. Go right okay. in. Um, look, I smoked. I made a decision to quit, okay? And my decision was firm, but not until I was ready. And when I was ready, I took my pack of cigarettes. I didn't wait until I had one more left. I took the whole pack and I said, no, I'm done. And I finished. And since then, I have not gone back. Great. When you do something like that, what you have to do is take responsibility for your actions and make sure that everybody that is surrounding you knows that you are willing to take responsibility for your actions. So I told my students and my family, I said, look, I quit. Okay. So for the next week, I'm being, going to be a prime USDA jerk. I said, so I apologize in, va in advance for my actions. I cannot help be held responsible as I will be delirious. <laughs> okay, after that, I got a little better and I got better and better and better and I've not had a craving. Why? Because I made a decision and that decision was based upon myself, not what I saw on television, not what someone liked or disliked, what they thought was cool or not cool what they expected to see of me or didn't expect to see of me. I made a decision for myself. I'm a vocalist. I also like to move around and run and do all that fancy stuff. You can't do that if you're short of breath. <laughs> you just can't. And you know. <laughs> Did you have to force yourself to put aside the cigarettes? No. So you woke up one morning and you made it the decision, but it wasn't a decision that you had to force yourself to do. It was there within you. It was there within me to do. I, uh, as a matter of fact, I believe I was with uh, my niece and my daughter, and I said, okay, I quit. <laughs> but I made a logical decision. I thought it through. This is what a person does. When a person says they're going on a fast, they wait until they've eaten. Yes. <laughs> okay? You know, and it is a full belly that talks of fasting. You know, it's just that way. Well, a person who says they're going to quit almost, almost 100% of the time, they will wait until they have two or three cigarettes left in that pack. <laughs> and just after they finish smoking a cigarette. So what I did was I bought that pack and I looked at it and I said, no, I quit. And they said, are you sure? I said, yeah, I quit. I'm done. I'm finished. No more. It's like when I start a diet. I always start it on Sunday because it's the first day of the week. Yeah. So on <laughs> Saturday, I eat everything in the house I can get a hold of and meals that, that I don't really want. Yeah. It's like, get it all down, and tomorrow you're going to start. Well, but it never works. It doesn't work. What you have to do is you actually have to set all this stuff right in front of you and make a decision not to. You have to actually use reverse psychology on yourself. And you can. You can. We have within us amazing things. We can, we can do such amazing things. We have the opportunity to, to evolve beyond what our wildest dreams are. We just do. But you have to be able to take the opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. In other words, you have to be willing to. So I ask, what is it you want? What is it you say that you want? Do you say that you want to lose weight? Do you say you want to be good at something? Do you say you want to stop doing something? Do you say you want to be known for something? Well, what can you do today, right now? What can you tell me right now that you are willing to do to set you on that path? A person says they want to write. Well, do you have a pen? <laughs> <laughs> go buy a pen. Go buy a pad of paper. I know everyone types. Okay? Go buy a pen and a pad of paper. You want to play the violin? Where's your violin? Do I need to help you get one? Okay? 
You say you want to be a dancer. Okay, I'll tell you what. Go over there and step side to side for about an hour. I'll be back. You say they want to be good at martial arts. <laughs> I found that to be quite the folly, which is really interesting because I've studied for uh, over 40 years. <laughs> okay? And um, they'll tell you, if I decide to get in and, and show a session, I'm not the nicest person in the world. I'm very kind. I'm always very kind. But I want to see what you're willing to do. If you tell me you want to study martial arts, don't tell me you're not willing to punch for 5,000 times or you're not willing to do 5,000 kicks. That's what it takes. What if they tell you I'll be ready tomorrow? Not good enough. No. They have to be ready right then and there. Be ready right then and there because I have a habit of throwing people right into the fire. Tell me you want to do films. <laughs> I'll have Bethy make you up. Okay. Oh, great. I have this part. Go get makeup. Now, do most people ignore their abilities because they're afraid? Yes, definitely. But they don't ignore them. They suppress them. You can't hide ignore what's inevitable. That's like ignoring the sun. Okay? Those abilities are on the inside of people, and they have these ideas. But what happens is they get surrounded by this cage of non-support, and it closes in on them, and they find no way out without hurting someone's feelings. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's where that guilt thing comes in, you know. You're hurting my feelings if you go to do this, or you're hurting my feelings if you go to do that, but don't you want to spend time with me? Look, you stopped smoking marijuana, you haven't been the same since. I don't even know you anymore. You're, you're not my friend anymore. And believe you me, these things that I'm saying to you, mm -hmm. they're very, very real. My students have been faced with them, and I've had to deal with people that have actually had to <clears throat> have come to say, I don't know them anymore since they've been involved with you. Oh, you mean they don't drink anymore. They don't smoke marijuana anymore. They don't do drugs anymore. They're not out committing crimes anymore. No, you don't know them. But I'll help you as well. Okay? People get a wonderful thought in their head. I want to go to school someplace else. I want to go see something. I want to go to an opera. Okay? Mm -hmm. Simple things. Mm -hmm. I want to wear something beautiful. I want to change my hair. Well, you can't do that. That's not the way that we do things. You've been hanging out with these people over here. They're a cult. They're a this. They're that. Oh, you have never even met the guy. You call him a <laughs> cult leader. You know? So look at the way that they walk. They are always standing too tall. Have you noticed something? I've noticed this since I've come to Maine. Now, I grew up in Los Angeles. I grew up in one of the worst places in the United States. But you know what? I made it out. And, you know, if I have to go back there, if the universe puts me there, I'll go back. Okay, but people stand. I have noticed more people, particularly women, that slump than I have in the whole of the United States. And I've traversed this country three or four times. Okay, mm -hmm. they slump. And you look at them and you say, stop slumping. And the reason for that is because they've been taught to slump. Don't stand up too tall. There's, there's some very beautiful and strong women here. And you know, they will deliberately set themselves weaker because that's what they're told they're supposed to do. Mm. But I found that with the young men, that they do what's expected of them to do, uh, which is not to excel. And it's, it's a shame because you got some bright people here. Mm -hmm. Very, very bright young men and women, and you try to stop them from doing silly things. I even tell them, look, before you go jumping off of a precipice because you think it's cool, call me. <laughs> <laughs> At least give me the, the opportunity to talk you down. Mm -hmm. Well, you might ask, what does this have to do with metaphysics? It has everything to do with metaphysics. The first step of metaphysics is common sense. Okay? The second step is spirituality. Spirituality is reality. The third step is to be willing to keep a promise and keep your word to at least yourself. And the fourth step is to do something. Okay? The fifth step is to keep succeeding and not be afraid of succeeding. There's your problem. Mm -hmm. Most people here are afraid of success. If they succeed, that means that everything will change. Which basically means they may wind up leaving someone behind. Mm -hmm. okay? Or they may wind up meeting new people. So, yeah. People suppress their abilities, even, especially when they have a thought and they see something that's about to happen, and it happens, automatically that means that they're possessed. Automatically that means that they're, they're committing some grave error in the realm of spirituality or religion. Automatically it means they've got a ghost in their house, you know, because they actually 
focused enough attention and were in some mental space that caused them to be able to move something. And they think a ghost came along and moved the flower. <laughs> but it was them. It may have been them. In many cases, I found that was true. Can your cognitive skills be developed at any age? At any age. At any age. It just depends on how willing you are to develop them. Well, I want you to know that I realize some of these questions I'm going to ask you. We could talk about for days. Yeah. But I, to make it complete, I wanted to make sure that our viewers would get a definition of each of the divine sciences Certainly. that we're going to dis discover. Uh, but just a basic definition, okay. okay? Now, what is clairvoyance? A clairvoyance is the ability to uh, receive a vision or an image of something that is about to happen. But what is not understood about clairvoyance is it's 360 degree, okay? Mm -hmm. Clairvoyance is the ability to uh, receive or see or project even uh, a vision about what is happening someplace else, <laughs> what happened before, what is about to happen, and what may even be happening on a parallel uh, level of existence. When a person tells you they have a gut feeling, is that's, that a type of clairvoyance? That's an actual instinct and intuition. It's a combination. The clairvoyance is a little different. Uh, an instinct is part of what is called in humanity a fight or flight mechanism. Okay, let's say that you have a certain amount of energy, okay? When that energy is being used, just like in a car, it goes down a bit. Mm -hmm. And when a person is about to, when they say they have a gut feeling, mm -hmm. okay, that energy focuses itself on a certain part. That would be right about here, okay, in the solar plexus. But we call it a gut feeling because it feels like it's right here. We're pretty general. Um, well, that energy fluctuates and it causes that sensation there. And you go, and actually in here, and you go, excuse me, and you go, you know, I just, I just have this gut feeling about something. Mm -hmm. And that's two things, your basic instinct and your intuition that are combining. Now, if a person has the ability to see something bad that's going to happen, can they change it? They can. Yes, they can. Everything that is negative or bad can be changed, even from your dreams. If you have a bad dream, okay, or a dream that you <coughs> view as being um, prophetic, you can change it. It's very simple. Um, for instance, in the dream, you watched something happen. You were wearing a certain thing. Uh, you ate a certain thing. Let's say that in a dream, you were wearing a bow tie. It was a red bow tie. and You know, you watched things get blown apart mm -hmm. because you were standing there. Get rid of the bow tie and you'll actually get rid of the feeling, the, the attention, or you understand that there are certain things that are going on in people's lives. There is always a remedy. You just have to find it. That's the, the uh, trick. Find it. Anything can be solved. When I do readings, I offer people solutions. Okay? There's always a solution. There are at least 12 solutions to any given problem, no matter what anyone says. Okay? Uh, people come up and tell me, you know, my, my son is going to jail because he did this, okay? That's something that he'll have to deal with, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have to stay there, okay? There's always an opportunity. Perhaps his condition there will be a little better, okay? And perhaps those that suffered because of it will wind up forgiving him. That's a solution. Mm -hmm. How do I deal with this? You're going to have to put yourself in therapy. You're going to have to find some kind of help. Find something to do so that you don't waste the waste of your, the rest of your life thinking about this one thing. And perhaps by your increasing your positivity, you will help him. What if he battles you about it? Oh, nine times out of 10, they will battle. That doesn't mean that you throw in the towel. You don't have to tell him everything that you're doing. You do it behind the scenes. And that's what mothers should learn. You know, mothers really should learn that there is a certain magic that happens that has nothing to do with confrontation. Mm -hmm. It has a lot to do with just gentility. You know, just, okay, fine. You can think that way. I'm still your mom. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the difference between instinct, intuition, and clairvoyance? Okay. Clairvoyance has nothing to do with you. Okay, intuition always has something to do with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, where you're involved directly. 
To be clairvoyant means that it has to do with the way the things are actually running, okay? Which has nothing really to do with you personally, except for the fact that you were the one that happened to pick up that energy stream at the time because you were receptive and open enough to do it, okay? Instinct is something that is based upon your own physical fight or flight mechanism, which is your survival instinct, mm -hmm. okay? Intuition has to do with your neurology or your uh, mental neurology, so to speak. And, uh, in order for me to actually qualify this, I have to go into an, a short explanation of your minds, okay? Um, you have five minds. Science only operates on two of them, unfortunately. <laughs> I've they, lost a few along the way. <laughs> uh, that's okay, we usually do. <laughs> but science only deals with your physical or your conscious mind or your subconscious. Uh, there are three beyond that. There's your sub-subconscious, there's your sub-supra and your superconscious. Explain those. Your sub-subconscious, is that which translates energy into a form that you can actually understand it, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Your subconscious takes that energy and puts it into a form, such as uh, color, uh, symbology, sound, uh, sustenance, things like that. Mm -hmm. Your sub-supra are those moments that you have of just revelation or superpower. That's that one that the mother uh, operates in when she goes and lifts the bus off of the child. That's mm -hmm. your sub-supra. Mm -hmm. That's that thing that takes us beyond what it is that we're normally capable of. Mm -hmm. Your superconscious is that which operates all the time on that level. Now, can you tap into that? Uh, yeah, well, to a degree. You, in order for you to tap into it full time, you'd probably disappear like uh, Buddha did, <laughs> you know? But um, you can operate in certain levels. Musicians, artists, uh, uh, to a degree, some scientists. Uh, as you can tell, I have somewhat, I have a deal with scientists. Mm -hmm. um, scientists limit people, and they always have, and it's unfortunate. They have a habit of telling us the obvious. In other words, uh, if you fall asleep up under an apple tree, you might get hit, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But um, I hope eventually they will catch up and understand that not everything can be explained by technology. And I happen to love technology, you know? But um, you have to deal with these five minds your physical mind is just your, your brain. That's an anchor. You know, physical body, physical mind is your brain. Subconscious, that is what deals with symbologies, colors, is a translator. Subsupra is a transformer, okay? Or, excuse me, sub subconscious is a transformer. Subsupra is moments of revelation. Uh, superconscious is your total and complete development. So you've had a terrible childhood and you've been abused. Is that in your subconscious? Um, it can be. It can lodge itself in, in your subconscious, and it can help create who you are. If you use it correctly, if you use it non-correctly, you wind up doing the exact same thing. Remember, we are human, and because we're human, we're based on uh, rote memorization and repetition, which means that we form habits, mm. okay? So your, your trial is to be able to transform yourself and transcend all of that trauma. It's a lot of trauma. Does your third brain, so to speak, have the energy to force your subconscious to do something? Yes, it does, definitely. And when you're super level, does that move the other one? Do they all move each other toward? It's, it's not really linear. It's more like they intermix, mm. okay, to create who it is that you are. It's kind of like, okay, there's the sun, there's the moon, the stars, the air, the five elements, there's all of that. They're not separate, okay? There's earth, fire, air, water, electricity, okay? We like to, that's one of those things that they say, it's love, it's spirit, it's, <laughs> a, well, spirit's a principle. Spirit is not an element, mm -hmm. okay? But um, they all mix together, kind of like your hand. These are personalities, but the hand is them combined. Mm -hmm. And that's what creates your life. That's what enables you to think and to carry things out. Um, you have to deal with those on a daily basis. Uh, no matter what anyone tells you, there are probably so many different dimensions that you would spend lifetimes trying to find out what they are. Um, those dimensions operate even in your physical dimension. They're what enables us to move from point A to point B. You know, you, you have to know that this is a very complex design and there would have to be someone that actually oversaw it. We didn't just get there by ourselves, no matter what anyone says. Um, so what part of your mind holds you back? You see something mm. happening, you want to do something about it, you know what you should be doing about it, 
but something tells you you just can't. Precondition, or in other words, uh, uh, you can call that generational. Mm. We're taught that. If no one taught you you couldn't fly, you find a way to. But we get taught, but we get programmed from the very moment we hit the dirt. You know, just bam. If you're a girl, you get slammed, a doll gets slammed in your hand. You're told that this is what little girls play with. If you're a guy, you get a truck or a wagon. Now that's yeah. beginning to change. <laughs> well, I hope so. It's long overdue. Mm -hmm. It's really long overdue, okay? Um, we get taught to fear everything. Don't go outside without your jacket. You'll get a cold. Don't eat that. It's not good for you. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't like that person. Don't do this, this, this. And well, guess what? That sticks, okay? And it forms a pattern. You know, it's the same with using drugs. Okay, what happens to a uh, person who uses drugs is they, they actually form a pattern. It's a pattern that, in, that actually imprints itself on your brain physically, okay? And that pattern is very hard to break. So when you break a pattern such as using drugs or alcohol or, or any form of violence at all, what happens is you cause a, a, a minor schism, okay? Because that person has to actually back their way out of hell. Mm -hmm. And that takes time. Well, your body fights you. Yeah. You've been addicted, so it still wants stuff, and your body's going to fight you That's about right. that. And it usually takes about seven years to break a habit like that. Seven years? Oh, yeah. Well, the reason, you, you have to understand, and I'm sure that my scientific colleagues can agree on this one, uh, <laughs> every cell in your body changes over seven years, okay? Mm -hmm. You have seven major energy centers in your body, okay? The first seven years of your physical development or your, your life are the most important because it's your physical development, okay? After that is 14, and after that it's, you know, 21. So you've got three different sevens, three different stages, which metaphysically um, lends itself to the fact that we're the third planet, which is the third dimensional planet, which is really interesting that it would take three stages of seven in order for us to fully develop. You know, you figure, mm -hmm. okay, the first seven physical develop, meant second seven is your personality development, and third seven is your actual structure. You've made an identification, which someone must have knew back in history because they decided to make 21 the legal age, <laughs> you know, which is really interesting. <laughs> you know, is, yes. I, I just find it very, very interesting. Third dimension, Earth, third planet, three different levels. Uh, the Hindus will tell you that you have seven major energy centers, which are known as chakras, I call them batteries, okay, because that's, that's what they are. Mm -hmm. I'm not Hindu, so I have to say what I know, and I call them circuits or batteries. And um, uh, these batteries dictate how you grow, who you are, and where you go. You have to actually clean a habit out of each one of them, and that takes a moment. However, I can attribute whatever malady that a person has to the energy center and then we'll deal with it on that level. Uh, women, I, I'm, I find myself apologizing on a, almost a daily basis for what we men have done. And look, I'm a guy, I have to take some responsibility. Okay? I apologize for my brothers on a frequent occasion. It's just, we have caused women to do this in their energy. So a lot of them don't even know who they are. And the ones who find out who they are, are ostracized labeled, dehumanized, rejected, and in some cases, subjugated. A woman will often say, I have the weight of the world on my shoulders. Well, that's the truth. And what? you know what? Many of us men are responsible for that. You know? and my teacher was a very powerful woman, so I owe women. You know, so, and she saved my life, literally. Do you know, before I met her, I couldn't keep a job for two weeks. How'd she change that? She told me to shut up. And, and then, go to it. Go to it. And then she told me that she accepted me for who I am. And for six years, I was under her tutelage. Fascinating to me. Absolutely fascinating. What is a telepath? Ah. A telepath is a person who can focus the uh, ability to see. Okay. Um, you can choose what, how you'd like to see. For instance, do I see auras? Of course I do. Uh, do I see... Ghosts, of course I do. Do I see dead people? Of course I do. And they're not the same. A ghost and a dead person are two different things. Um, do I see the energy patterns of the earth? Yes, I do. Um, can I use them? Yes, I can. And I do. 
there is nothing about any information that I cannot bring into my head, okay? So a telepath can connect with anybody? Yes, anyone, at any time. Even somebody who doesn't believe in a telepath? Uh, belief has nothing to do with anything. A person can sit and tell me they don't believe in the sun and sit there with their eyes closed all day and then wait until night. I'll go outside and ask them, can you see stars? Mm -hmm. you know, belief has absolutely nothing to do with anything. It's like believing that that's not a plant, believing you're not here, believing that that's not an LCD screen, believing that this isn't light. That's ridiculous. I don't argue such points with people. <laughs> Is it only ideas and thoughts that you can use through telepathy or can you share energy? You can share energy as well. It would be better to actually channel energy rather than to share it because you need your energy. Mm -hmm. You can be a channel for it. In other words, you can actually draw energy to you, focus it, and deliver it. What exactly does New Age mean? Mm. Uh, people decided that they needed a, a phrase for uh, the acceptance of something other than conventional religion. Therefore, they came up with a term, New Age, which is really old but it's a new time, I guess, <laughs> you know. Uh, there are many different uh, explanations for New Age. There are different types of New Age people. Uh, I myself take a very practical uh, level. If, you, if I can't use it practically, it's no good to me. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I can sit and see angels all day, but if I can't use that particular energy and force to better my life or to bring positive things into my life, it's no good. But there are people that uh, like to use crystals and they, they explain it. They take all of these things, such as Wicca, paganism, Druid, Druidism, mysticism, um, crystal stuff, and they put it in this one package called New Age. Now, uh, conventional religion, uh, and I, I feel funny saying that because convention, there shouldn't be a convention to religion. Mm -hmm. Remember, religion was established as a way for a person to commune with God, yes. okay, or goddess, and I actually follow the goddess so uh, to say conventional or to say that you don't do this in this particular religion makes it invalid I mean uh, new age is something that is all-inclusive supposedly interestingly enough some of the new age community is more judgmental than uh, conventional religion you know, that I've found since I've been here at least. let's talk about auras I'd like to know what's it look like and what can you tell about a person from their aura. Yours specifically? <laughs> Would you tell me? Do I have sure. an aura? Actually, you do. Uh, you're surrounded a lot of times by uh, this stuff, so your aura kind of gets a little uh, pre-energized by things that are going on, but mostly your aura is very uh, light and is very pinkish, and uh, it also has hues of purple, which would explain your idealism, okay? Yes. Um, yeah. Also, your quick-wittedness, which means that you're extremely mercurian, which would explain the yellow. Okay. My quick wittedness. Yeah. Nice. Well, and that has you're very yellow. Mercurian. You like fast thought. You can't stand things that are slow, uh, which is really, really interesting because uh, I would have put you someplace uh, uh, on a field with land because you need that. Yeah. You know, space. You like the, yeah, you like the space. So everybody has an aura. Everyone does. Everything and everyone. So when you're sitting in a room, let's say you see a person in the corner whose aura is dull or they're having a problem? Yeah. Is it very hard for you not to go over and say to them, I know you're having a problem, I'd like to help? Yeah, it used to be harder. Um, I don't anymore. I found that uh, when, when there's a telepath around, people get the willies. And uh, <laughs> you know, I've actually walked into a room and they had every head turned and people just kind of look down. I'm very approachable. I mean, I, I know I look like a bruiser and everything, but. <laughs> I'm very, very approachable, but uh, I'm sure that people can feel the energy of a telepath. Automatically, I scan people. I mean, I do it automatic. It's not something that I'm willing to turn off. I grew up in South Central Los Angeles. You don't turn things like that off. You know. So when we first met this morning, I scanned did you, you. Did you know I was a friendly being, or? I knew that you were happy. <laughs> <laughs> I also know that uh, uh, you do like things of a magical nature, although you don't really talk too much about it, but you do love it. You love things of a druidry nature. I would put you in the druid corner, definitely. Well, then now we can talk about my collection of rocks. Okay. Everybody thinks it's so foolish, but when I go somewhere and I'm happy at that place, I take a rock from it. It's not a, necessarily a pretty rock. It can be just a plain, ordinary rock. I pick it up and I take it home. Now, I have these rocks all over my apartment, and people will say to me, 
why are these ugly rocks in every room? And I'll say, they make me happy. They remind me of a certain time. Uh, which means that most of the rocks are actually uh, um, darker colored. And the reason for that is because they send off a low level vibration, which causes harmony, which is really interesting. Uh, I was telling you earlier, uh, the rock or the stone is the first level of evolution. When you start collecting them, you're actually gathering energy, okay? And that would make sense since you're a druid nature. Um, you like things of nature, but you like the hard nature. Probably one of your favorite smells is the sidewalk after the rain. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, so um, you are, you're just gathering. That's your power, okay? You like the power of the stones, which is good. It means that you're very, very firm. Uh, your birthday is when? In August, I'm a Leo. Okay, August number? 11. Yeah, okay, that's 11 to two, which is a vibration number, which means you, you like to have the relationship with the earth. You also like the independence. Um, so when you're gathering your stones, you're actually gathering your own independence. Those are part of your body that you're gathering. Okay? And that's exactly how you feel about them. You know, they're, they're mine. They're who I am. You don't have to like them. I it, like them. It's true. <laughs> and, and people will say, it doesn't look well, that stack of rocks in the corner. And I said, I don't care. Yeah, they're mine. It looks well to me. Yeah. Mm. It's good. Now, can a person attract negative energy? Oh, definitely. Uh, that, we do that naturally. We actually are great transformers. Uh, we can attract negative or positive energy if we make no choice because they both come simultaneously. You actually have to make the choice to uh, attract the negative energy. And people do that for the sake of relationship, family. They do it for the sake of who will accept me, who won't accept me, or just self-indulgence. Um, we can definitely attract negative energy. And you can see what that negative energy does by the choices that a person makes. So how can we learn to attract positive energy? Make a decision. The decision is already there. Look, there's water or there's an alcoholic beverage. Okay, mm -hmm. make a decision. It's that simple. It really is that simple. It may not be the easiest thing, but it really is that simple. Okay, I know that if I drink this, I'm probably gonna get sick, <laughs> but you know, I'll do what I wanna do and I'll be accepted by my friends. But if I drink this, I, I, it's very low risk, and at least I'll be hydrating my body, which means that I can pass things through that are not needed and keep my body out of a state of acidosis, okay? Which means that I stand a chance to be kind of healthy at least, you know? <laughs> it's just a decision. It's a simple decision. But you'll find that we get pressured into so much. I mean, just to go day to day, you know? If you don't, if you're out with your friend and you decide you don't want the chocolate cake, but they want it. They're going to tell you that you're a stick in the mud and not want to go out with you anymore. Well, guess what? Everybody on the face of this earth is looking for one basic thing, and you can call it whatever you want. It's just acceptance. Mm -hmm. okay? To be rejected is a harsh punishment. Okay? To, to reject someone outwardly is like telling them that worse than you hate them, you won't accept them. And what that does to a person who is basically still a child on the inside is it cuts them. All of us are basically children. I don't care what kind of exterior we've created for ourselves and what kind of motion we've put ourselves into, we are basically children, playing adult. Or they'll say to you, just have a small piece yeah. so you can be with us. Yeah. Just join us and we'll have a regular size piece. You just have a small one. <laughs> well, I have a method to deal with that. <laughs> the moment someone says, uh, just join us, you know what you should do? You should remember all of the horror movies that you've ever seen in your life and remember the key term is when the devil says, join us, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just go, no. <laughs> now, can you transfer positive energy to things like a tree or a plant? Um, yeah, you can. And you know how you do it? Think positive thoughts. Or by loving that plant, so Love to speak. Love that plant. Water it, <laughs> you know, give it some light. Let it be where it wants, you, wants to be, you know. People say all the time, and they make a big deal, I, I've seen so many whispering shows, there's a horse whisperer, there's a dog whisperer, there's a ghost whisperer, there's probably plant whispers and wall whispers, <laughs> you know, but um, it's very simple. Listen, mm -hmm. just listen. We have two ears, and that, those ears are connected to a brain, which is connected to a huge computer, okay? Listen, the plant itself will tell you what it doesn't like or what it likes. It's really simple. 
and then give it that. Guess what? You've just transferred positive energy. Okay. So you can do that for your animals and pets too. Yeah, sure you can. You certainly you can. I have dogs that will come up to me and tell me they're hurting. I'll massage them. They'll look at me, say thank you, and go away. <laughs> and they've seen this, you know. <laughs> uh, my and students. What kind of language day. does dog talk? Um, it depends on what language you speak. It doesn't do good for a dog to speak Spanish if you don't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's in your thoughts. Um, if you're expecting your dog to come up and go, hello, you know, with their <laughs> mouth, that's not going to happen. And I did see that thing on YouTube where the dog goes, rah, 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 and they translated into, I love you. It's I ruffle. Yeah, but it, it wasn't that. It just sounded like rah, rah, rah to me, and I'm a telepath. I, you know, so, um, oh, we running? We're running long oh, oh there's so much i wanted to ask well, I you i told you i rant well that's all right but there's a couple of things i do have to ask if a okay. person is happy doing something that is considered bad for them does that make it acceptable no no if it's considered bad to them and they know it's bad it doesn't make it acceptable um if they're hurting someone else it definitely doesn't make it acceptable look at these pages i had for you i'm sorry but that's all right because we'll probably have you over again sure uh now I know about spells, and I know that you have some spells on your website. Mm -hmm. Do they always work? Always. Always? Always. You've never had one not work for you? No. Okay, now tell me about your school and the various classes you offer. Okay. Uh, I'm headmaster of Unicorn Cove School of Metaphysics. It's in uh, Westbrook, and I offer classes on astrology, numerology, telemetry, uh, psychic self-defense, which is my forte, you know, protecting the energy. Manual arts such as uh, sing, singing, dance, art, poetry, drawing, painting, sculpture. Uh, I teach several forms of martial arts. I teach herbalism. I teach concoctionism, uh, spell work. Uh, I teach prayer. I teach um, common sense and how to break an addiction. Where do you find the time? Pretty good at time management. <laughs> Besides, I've learned over the years to delegate. <laughs> can people truly find peace of mind? Yes, they can. That's the important question for me. Good. The way I look at it, we are all puzzles with missing pieces. And to find those missing pieces, we have to share with others and care about the world around us in a positive way. Sounds easy, doesn't it? But it's not. Until next time, adios.